on earrings. All right, we're live, guys. <laughs> Hello, good morning. Welcome to Freedom Homestead. Welcome back to the Beyond Labels Book Club. Sorry, I've got uh, we've got construction going on, and it's the pounding is like literally right over my head. So uh, anyway, we hope you all are doing well. We hope that you all are enjoying this book as much as we are. And um, I'm going to put myself on mute because there's a lot going on at the moment. Um, but uh, ladies, if you all want to reintroduce yourselves to everyone and um, Constance, we'll start with you. All right. So my name is Constance and I'm a YouTuber over at A Good Life Farm. I'm located in Northern Alabama and I'm also a blogger. I have two websites, a goodlifefarm.com and wholesomeskillet.com and everything at wholesomeskillet.com is gluten-free, very uh, farm to table recipes over there. It's kind of a newer website. So it's got just a handful of recipes so far. And at a goodlifefarm.com, there is over 700 recipes and a whole lots of articles and all sorts of good stuff. That's me. I guess I'll go next. Uh, my name is Anna from the Fermented Homestead. I just have a YouTube channel and I attempt to post on Instagram every once in a while, but that's that's to be uh, in the works. I am uh, I just make YouTube videos and I have fun with it. I do a lot of food preservation is my main jam that I do. Uh, freezing, dehydrating, canning, fermenting, and also trying to make some videos on how to actually use all of that preserved food because there's no point in having all that stuff in your pantry if you don't know how to cook with it. So that's kind of my jam and what I do. I don't make up a whole lot of recipes on my own. I just take other recipes and tweak them and uh, kind of show people how to make substitutions and do all that kind of fun stuff. I leave all the awesomeness uh, to Constance <laughs> over there. So that's about it for me. Hello, everyone. <laughs> I'm Julie from Rowan Co. Farms. Uh, I live in central Georgia. We have a 20 acre farm. Uh, we raise some cattle and chickens and uh, bees. Also, we added bees last year to our homestead and also started a flower farm this year. So that is our new endeavor where we're actually trying to bring in some income to our farm. Uh, so I'm really excited about this year's flower farm. And I'm really excited about this book club journey. Um, I have a YouTube channel called Row & Co. Farms. I also have a website and a blog, which is a little bit newer, um, but my YouTube channel has been around for about a year and I'm loving it. I'm just bringing all the homestead stuff that we're doing, uh, cooking and uh, all the, the raising of the animals. So I'm really enjoying it and I hope you guys will follow along with us. Awesome. Okay. So uh, for those of you who are new here, my name is Tangie and our channel is Freedom Homestead. And um, you can find us on Facebook and on Instagram. We are currently renovating our home. So which is why you hear a lot of banging happening up uh, upstairs. Um, but here at Freedom Homestead, we are a homestead lifestyle channel. We share grocery hauls, canning, recipes, gardening, um, so that's what we do here. Um, okay, so this is our second week of Beyond Labels. We hope you guys are enjoying this book as much as we are. So uh, this past week's assignment was to read chapter three. And if you did that, then you know that this uh, there was a quiz, kind of a pop quiz in there. Not really so much a quiz. Really, it's a questionnaire. Uh, just to kind of see where you fall in the, um, the spectrum of... Uh, between processed foods and homegrown uh, whole foods. And uh, ladies, who wants to share where you fell on, on that spectrum? <laughs> okay, I'll, I can go first. Um, so I scored a 37. Um, hang on, let me get to that page. So that puts me in the locally grown whole food category. Um, so it, it is about where I thought I would fall. And um, but yeah, I mean, I would love to do absolutely 100 percent homegrown whole food. Um, but we currently live on an acre. So I don't really ever see that I would be able to grow all of the grains, all of the protein that our family would need to be um 
completely homegrown. Um, but even still, I don't foresee that I would ever actually ever always make my own foods with everything. So yeah, I, I feel like it was pretty accurate. Julie, how about you? I actually also scored a 37, same thing. Um, and I, I feel the same way as you. I, I don't think we'll ever be 100% growing everything ourselves, not in the way that we would want to, you know, if we had to grow enough protein or enough something, you know, and that's all we had, I think we could get by, but it's not the way we would want to do it. You know, I think we want to have variety. And if we want that variety, we're definitely going to have to still use some outside sources for our food. Um, there's just no way for everyone to do everything, but I think it's okay to be okay with that. I, I'm fine with not doing it all. It's, it's hard to do even what I do now. And, and that's a lot. So I, I definitely don't think I could add more to my plate than what I'm already doing. I'm growing what I can and what I'm willing to and and raising the meat that I'm able to. So yeah, I, I like where I fall into the categories. I do think there's some places where I can improve and do a little bit better. Um, but But yeah, I think I'm pretty happy with where I've started on this journey. Excellent. What about you, Miss Constance? And I also want to tell really quick, uh, those of you who are watching, if you feel comfortable giving your score, uh, let us know. So I got a 41, which I think is pretty good. Um, but, you know, it, you know, like Julie said, there's never going to come a point where I am going to be 100% from my homestead. There's just not, you know, I have zero intention of ever raising cattle. We don't have that big enough of a place, you know, really. I mean, maybe we could have a cow, but who wants to have a cow, <laughs> you know, anyways. Um, but yeah, there's there's certain things I know I'm never going to be able to do 100%, not, not everything. And, you know, like, for instance, question number one, let, let's just talk like as an example. Uh, it says, if you wanted to cook spaghetti, what would you use for the sauce? And it gives options like prepared sauce from the store, organic prepared sauce, et cetera, et cetera. Now, of course, I grow tomatoes and I, I can and I, I make my own pasta sauce and things like that. But, you know, if it's winter and I ran out of pasta sauce, I'm going to go to the grocery store and get some organic pre-made pasta sauce, you know. Um, so I, I, I think for some of them, there is sort of an in-between and you're going to have multiple answers just depending upon the situation. And uh, I really think that for each question is do the best you can for each situation. I agree. I I got I'm low ball apparently. I only got a 35 because I eat my lunch at my desk while surfing the internet. And, but anyways, um, as of today, that won't happen. Well, as of yesterday, I guess, but I was still being kind of truthful. And same thing with Constance. I just, I answered what is my normal. Like if I have the choice to do it and what I place a priority on, that's kind of the answer that I, that I gave for it. Um, like as an example, it says, do you currently have a garden and that you tend to? It's, it's February and I'm getting ready to move. I have had a garden for the last four years and I've, I've grown a significant portion of that, but currently, and I don't know what's going to happen in the coming year. Um, I, I don't know what's going to happen with that, but I still put yes, because I have a garden and I tend it, you know, There's stuff like that. I just did the best that I possibly could. And I think that that's probably right around where I settle. There's definitely things that I want to improve. Like I do want to have cattle and I want to have um, you know, I want to have a milk cow or two and I want to raise my own, you know, I want to, you know, Justin Rhodes style. Like I want to like raise their babies as, as food, as time goes on and kind of continue to strengthen the herd, you know, that kind of thing. My husband really wants to grow his own uh, pigs. You know, we, ha we have a lot of things that we really want to do. And, um, but I did not score based on what we want to do. I did, unfortunately, <laughs> if, if, if some buts, you know, um, but I did answer this truthfully as I possibly could. And I think, I, I think that's, that's pretty darn accurate for me. Okay. Sorry. I keep forgetting that I have my, my thing, uh, muted. Okay. So grandpa's urban homestead said, uh, got a 16. It leaves room for improvement. And I like that. 
And I, I like that too. I think um, it's really important to, to look at it that way. I, I remember we had moved to a subdivision many moons ago and I was just getting into homesteading. And I'm like, I can't believe we live in a subdivision. Like, what can you do in a subdivision? And then one day, and which is funny for me because, you know, I've, I'm usually a very optimistic person. And then one day it was like, you big dummy, you start where you are. This is a good time to be learning things. It's a good time to improve the skills that I've already set out learning and learn new ones where I'm at while I'm waiting for my my bigger my bigger homestead that I'll get one of these days. Um, so I think it definitely starts with um, you know I mean it, it's about it's about it's about the food it's about the food it's all about the food. Um, so what ladies uh, for for those who might live in a subdivision and they they want to do this kind of stuff maybe they're feeling like they can't. What what would you recommend uh, as far as um, on the spectrum between processed and homegrown. What is something that someone can do right now so, to start working this way? So we were an active duty army family and we lived all over the place. And one of the, well, I can tell you the very first garden that I ever had was some flower boxes on my balcony in Germany. And I grew cherry tomatoes and I grew um, some peppers. And that was my first time growing anything. And from that point on, anytime we moved, we, I would have um, flower boxes, flower pots. Uh, when I lived at Fort Bragg, uh, my entire patio was covered in flower boxes filled with herbs. I went, it was my first time going vertical and I grew uh, cucumbers on a trellis and and things like that. And so you could take that tiny space and grow as much as you could in that tiny space. And I think that herbs is a great way to get started because they're so easy to grow and they don't need much space. And so I think that's like the perfect tip your, tip your, dip your toe in the water um, sort of thing, because you can easily be successful and that will encourage you to try other things. I agree. Um, you can definitely grow a lot in a really small space. And I know a lot of people, they worry about homeowners associations, covenants and restrictions. So my thing is instead of, if, of, trying to fight them, kind of beat them at their own game. So in your flower beds in the front, instead of, you know, planting whatever kind of bush, plant some blueberry bushes, plant some other things that instead of a row garden, you're just sneaking things in, you're planting within the space that you have. There are tons of things that you can do in a small space. If you can't do it in your front yard, sneak to your backyard. There are places where you can tuck food in and I know a lot of people that even tuck in a few chickens in a small space. They don't get a rooster. The hens are pretty quiet. Most of the time, neighbors wouldn't even know they were there. You could have fresh eggs with two or three chickens in your backyard, and you would have at least a dozen eggs a week like that. And most families, a dozen eggs a week is all you need. So there are definitely some easy ways to tuck in fresh food into your, uh, into your small, small um, space. Absolutely. For me, like I did that for a long time. We, we had our place in the suburbs. It was in an HOA. We couldn't have anything. And so I just turned my kitchen into my waiting room and, and I into my classroom. Like I just, I learned how to can, I learned how to freeze, to hydrate from it. I learned all of these different things with stuff that we did grow some of the stuff in the backyard, but, um, and we preserved those and we, we start, started to learn how to cook with those things. Cause prior to that, like you don't realize that you don't know how to cook with these foods until you try them out. And if you try them on a small scale while you're still in this waiting room and, you know, just, you know, like Jess always says, turn your waiting room into a classroom. And that's exactly what we did. We just learned how to do all of these sorts of things. But one thing that's really great in most HOAs that you can do is actually you can have bunnies. You can, you can raise meat birds, I meat, but meat rabbits. They're generally not considered to be like a livestock animal. You can have them. They're very quiet. They don't smell 
and you can keep them in your garage if you have one. Um, so that's a, that's a really great way to uh, to be able to kind of incorporate that. I think all of those are incredible. Um, I like how Kathy said, I have less than a tenth of an acre and grow so much that she sells the rest. What she can't, she sells what she can't eat at the farmer's market. That's incredible. Uh, Monica says, let's see if I can get this. Uh, I live in an HOA. I have three green stocks, two, three by three by eight raised beds and several smart pots getting my 162 trace uh, seeds started soon. That is really, really awesome. Um, so th these are all fantastic tips on if you want to start growing. Um, also, if you ladies don't mind me plugging another channel, uh, Miss Becky from, uh, um, my mind just went blank. Acre Homestead, wow. Uh, from Acre Homestead is actually getting ready. She is starting a series on her channel on container gardening. Um, so if you already aren't following her, I think that I'm, I'm going to be following her just because I can grow anything in the ground. Just about. I can grow anything in the ground. I cannot container garden well. I've tried, but I do not do well with container gardening. I can't get anything to, uh, to come to fruition, literally, um, in containers. Um, let's see. Okay. Uh, uh, Grandpa's Urban Homestead had a good tip too a rosemary bush because they're beautiful and nobody would know that that wasn't just a shrub mm -hmm. oh and purple basil by the way purple basil is beautiful yeah but totally it's just basil <laughs> yep um okay so we've talked about growing food um and then the the next big step if if you haven't done this before is learning to cook from scratch um this is something that I know I take for granted that a lot of people are raised um, cooking from scratch. Uh, a lot of folks are used to opening a box and throwing it in the microwave. Um, but I think that is a huge, huge step is learning to make your own bread, learning to make your own salad dressing and your own mayonnaise. We actually talked about this uh, in our in our personal conversations I said, you know, I, I have chickens. I have always said I've, I've always wanted to make my own mayonnaise. I just haven't done it yet. Um, and I don't know if I would be good enough to remember to always keep it going um, in the fridge. So uh, if you see my grocery hauls, you might see a jar of Duke's mayonnaise pop up in there occasionally. Um, but I need to make sure that I can do it because I, I understand that with making mayonnaise, like you can do it to a point that it breaks or whatever. I don't know. I haven't done it yet, but I need to. Um, but these are all all things uh, that certainly will get you closer to to that goal. Um, I did that one time. Uh, I was making homemade um, mayonnaise and I was doing an avocado one, which, you know, avocado oil is a little pricey. And that was heartbreaking because once it breaks, you can't really fix that. Um, so, yeah, I just I I learned slower poured in slower and I've, I've never had an issue since <laughs> immersion blender yes making mayonnaise with an immersion blender is yeah. what i've done that's, but yeah well, I did that's, it. that's how i do it in a mason jar you know oh yeah. Mm. yeah i've seen though if it does break like that that you can still use it like in baking potentially in some other applications where it doesn't require or just for sauteing or something, you can use the oil, but yeah, I've seen where other people like try to recover it and not completely waste it because yeah, that is terrible when you're using I a had, good oil like that to waste yeah. it and, and it not work out. So I, I had I not heard that. That's a great tip. Yeah. So, okay. So, oh, go ahead, Tangie. Go ahead. Oh no, you go ahead. Um, I was just going to kind of go on to an another part, but I don't know if you if you were ready to do that yet. So I was going to let you decide. You do, you do want to. I was just going to talk yes. about um, one of the points or something that, that stood out to me as I was reading through this was the point is not to be perfect. The point is to be consistent. And that just spoke volumes because it, it referenced another book that I have I have read and loved, which is called Atomic Habits, which is about being consistent with little tiny things and that being the 
the thing that drives big results in the end. It's those little things you do. It's not the big stuff. It really is the consistency with small things. And so that was, um, that was something that was like, you don't have to be perfect every day, but you've got to move the needle forward a little bit every day and make those, even if it's just a tiny step, it's still a step forward. Um, and another piece of advice that came from that same book, Atomic Habits, is never miss twice, which means it's okay if you forget to make your bed today, but do it tomorrow. Don't miss again and say, okay, oh, well, I didn't do it. We, we kind of talked about this last week, just giving up the whole thing because you had one little setback. And so it's just get it in your mind. Okay, I missed today, but I'm not going to miss tomorrow. I'm going to get it right tomorrow. So that was something that was just, that really stood out to me, that spoke to me uh, that they said. So I just wanted to mention that. Yeah, I, I think that's really, really uh, important. Uh, I think uh, maybe Anna was the one that mentioned this last week, uh, talking about how um, uh, Rebecca from um, Justin Rhodes, how she said that as they were beginning their food journey, uh, because they were both, I think she has Hashimoto's, right? And um, of course, he has limes and, and they've had to change the way they ate. That as they ran out of things is when they would replace it with something homemade or healthier. And I think that's a really, really great um, tip because um, number one, it's a perfect way to go slow. You know, you run out of mayonnaise today, make it instead of going out and buying the expensive um, primal $7 a jar mayo, which by the way, I've had it before. I don't, I don't, I don't like the way it tastes. <laughs> I was like, it's a good thing I found this at a salvage store and I paid 99 cents for it. Otherwise, I, I'd be really disappointed if I spent a whole bunch of money on it. Um, there's, a, there's a great tip from Bucket List Homestead. When you know better, you do better. It's our family motto. That, that is, that's, that's a good one. That's a really good one. Um, so, uh, yeah, um, I, and that's one thing that I really like about this book. I don't know if, if everybody else has read ahead, uh, but I, I have started reading ahead and um, I really, really like how it is. It truly is broken up in practical bites, something that you can apply uh, a little bit as you go. Um, so he's running some sort of machinery up there. I'm going to put myself on mute. Um, and so, uh, Anna, do you want to? Talk about what stood out to you in this chapter. Sorry, my husband was just about to flop in there. Um, basically, I just liked that it kind of, it gave you, I liked the quiz. Like that was kind of my favorite part. It was just kind of giving you an understanding of where you are. And the quiz was as accurate as you are honest. Like it made you think like there is this whole spectrum of things that, that you can do. And it's not just like, you don't always have to be perfect. And for me, being consistent is where I struggle. Like I really, really struggle with the small little details. I'm like, it's just something small. It's just making your bed. But like, and it was, it's kind of interesting because like, there's a whole, there's a whole book written about, it, you know, just <laughs> Jordan Peterson, you know, just making sure you always make your bed. It's, you know, and it is true. Like when I was younger, I didn't used to make my bed and my life felt so scattered and everything just felt so, so different. And it's not just like the act of making your bed. It's, it's the mentality of making your bed um, is what really changes things. And I struggle with it tremendously. I, I put off the small stuff constantly. I'm a terrible, terrible procrastinator. And I really struggle to find value in the small things, uh, value in doing the small things. I'm just like, it's just small. Like, why does it matter? But then when you look at it, you're like, well, if I had just changed that one thing four years ago and done it every day, things would have been different. Like things would have been, you know, I could have changed a lot about myself, a lot about my life, a lot about my body, a lot about my health. If I just done this one thing, four years ago and done it every day consistently. So it's definitely giving me some pause and making me kind of reevaluate the importance of these small things that I tend to just brush off to the side. Like it doesn't matter. Um, and it adds up. It really adds up a lot. I love that. I, I, I definitely uh, agree. I, I like how you said 
if you had stuck with it or if you'd started earlier, how things could be different now. And if you kind of take that into perspective, okay, so like what is what is one thing that you could do today that, you know, you can look back four years from now and go, I'm so glad I made that, that one change. Like maybe it's like cutting it, cutting out sugary drinks. Like if I, if I had cut out sugary drinks four years ago, what a difference that would make. It, it really is the small thing. Like you said, it, it accumulates over time. That's, that's awesome. Absolutely. Talk about, um, yeah, focusing on the trajectory, not, not just that one, you know, you focus on the little thing, but that little thing is you point that in the right direction and you just do that little thing again and again and again and again. And then you reach that way. It's way down the road. And that's why people dismiss those little things so much is because it seems so far away and so small, like this can't possibly make a difference. And if I don't do it today, it's no big deal. But yeah, that cumulative effect is really, really powerful when you think about it. It's like, it's like when you're, if you were accruing money like that, you would be like, oh, wow, this is great. I'm, I'm gaining all this money. But just think of it in, yeah, you're gaining this, this knowledge, this health, this, this direction in your life. And so I think that's, uh, it's just a neat way to look at it. Think about the trajectory of the thing. One thing that I see Monica Sherman down here, she put down there the 1% every day. And I think that's reference to something that Justin Rhodes is always talking about. It's just, you're getting 1% better every day. And that 1% accumulates so quickly to where you're just like, you're infinitely better even within just a year. And he's, he's always talking about that. And it's, it's definitely a part of the, just making small changes every day, but continuing to maintain them really is exponential in, in its impact in your life. Yep. And Dorinda said, it's a journey, not a destination. And that is so, so very true. Um, someone is asking about duck eggs or quail eggs. Who was it? They said they were allergic to chicken eggs. Oh, here we go. Uh, Farmstead Flowers and Foxhounds. Very cute channel name. I'm allergic to chicken eggs. Been told I might try duck or quail eggs. Anyone have suggestions of which tastes better? I have not ever had either. Um, but it looks like uh, other folks are helping her out in the chats. Delightful Cottage said, uh, I'm on my last jar of Dukes. I am committed to making it now. All right. Good deal. I'm, I'm definitely going to try to make it too. Um, but I, I do think I need to get like a jug of avocado oil. Because I just get it in the bottles, but I see like um, Rachel and Todd from 1870s Homestead, they always, you know, they pull out that like gallon jug of avocado <laughs> oil. And I'm like, yes. I, I have a video it. on my channel if you want to learn how to make mayonnaise, by the way. That's All a, right. That's a plug for me. By <laughs> yeah, I'm getting ready to do one coming up pretty soon. Oh, but yeah. it's going to be fermented. Fermented Ooh. mayonnaise? Yeah, you just use uh, kombucha instead of um, like any kind oh, of wow. vinegar. You use like kombucha vinegar, and it just—I mean, it's it's same similar principle, but I mean, technically, it is fermented if you use oh, it a little bit. I always use lemon juice, so basically, instead of lemon, you would use the kombucha instead. Exactly. I, yeah, I do the lemon juice too. That sounds really interesting. Intriguing. I okay, I love the flavor with apple cider vinegar. It's really good too if you use that instead. Um, let's see. Uh, sand of the sun. Don't punish yourself for not doing something. Just get back on the horse the next day. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's um, when I have had success before losing weight. Um, one thing I would have to do is I would have to focus one meal at a time. So if I messed up on this meal, that's okay. My next one is going to be better. Um, and that way I could just, I, I wouldn't punish myself. And also, um, I wouldn't get overwhelmed because I am a very much all or nothing mindset and I have to protect myself from being that way. So I don't completely give up. And, um, whenever, if you have a lot of weight to lose, or maybe you're trying to reverse diabetes or high blood pressure, it can seem like a lot there's a lot of work and it's, and it's a long time that you are committing to it. And it can be very overwhelming. How am I ever going to take this weight off? How am I ever going to, um, you know, 
how much sugar do I not have to eat before I reverse my type two diabetes? You know, um, but if you, I find if you focus one bite at a time, one meal at a time, one day at a time, then the next thing you know, like a whole month has passed, and then six months have passed, and then a year has passed, and and you find that things are improving. Um, so I think that's a really good that's a really good um, tip. Um. All right. Uh, Constance, have you given us your feel of the chapter overall? Um, I have not, and but I, I kind of agree with, um, I think what Anna was saying is that, you know, just doing that quiz shows you different options. You know, it, it shows you, I mean, you could just look at one of the questions and say, oh, well, I could do this a little bit better, or I could, I can improve in this particular thing. And you know, I, I like, you know, after the quiz, how it says to move towards your goal with grace, you know, just show grace to yourself when you do have those failings and, and know that you're not going to be a hundred percent perfect from, you know, right out of the gate, you know, you're going to have to um, do things a little bit at a time and, and make the, make the changes a little bit of time and, the more you learn, the more you can do. And as you develop, like, say, if you're just wanting to start cooking from scratch, give yourself time to develop those skills. It, it's not going to be instant. You're not going to read a book, even this book. You're not going to read a book and have all the answers immediately. I agree. I, I think um, my, I have my daughter-in-law is has grown up on the the standard American diet. I guess we all have, you know, for the most part, but she's very interested in learning, learning some healthier ways to cook. And so that's what we've been kind of tackling with her. Not, not that we're tackling things with her. It's not like that, but the, we're, she wants to learn some new ways to cook and how to substitute and make changes. And, and I think she's like a perfect example of starting the journey from the very beginning, because, you know, drinking sodas, buying the standard white bread and your, your, you know, canola oil and stuff like that. If that's all you're used to, and that's what you know, that's what you're going to revert to. And so making those little changes is, is tough. And so, yeah, I'm hoping to help her develop some new cooking skills and just basic stuff, because you can take those basic things and little imagination you can run with it. You change a vegetable here or there, you change a meat or a protein here or there you've got, you got a whole nother dish and you can work with it. So yeah, that's, that's a great, great way. Just learning some basic cooking skills and you're not going to do that in just one channel. It is going to, it's going to be over many, many channels and many recipe books and things like that, but it's definitely a doable thing. Yeah. Um, I, I think I have told this before. So, uh, but some of, some folks may still be shocked when they learn this. When Jack and I got married, <clears throat> okay, y'all, I grew up in Georgia. So Ju Miss Julie understands this. Like in the South, we like our tea sweet. And so when Jack and I first got married, when I would make a one gallon pitcher of tea, it would have two cups of sugar. And when I say cups, I don't mean leveled. I mean heaping cups of sugar. Like McDonald's tea, if y'all have ever had McDonald's sweet tea. Um, but over the last several years, I have cut back and cut back and cut back because the first time that I tried to cut back our sugar, I literally went from two cups, heaping cups of sugar to one cup of sugar. And it was awful. That did not go over well in our house <laughs> at all. In fact, that's when my daughter just quit drinking tea. She was just like, I, she said, I would just uh, rather drink water. Well, she's been drinking water ever since then. But um, anyway, so that was traumatizing and my family hated that. So I went back to the, the two cups, but I started slowly taking some out. So I went from like two heaping cups to two level cups, then from two level cups to like a cup and three fourths and then a cup and a half. And so now we're down to just a cup. And, and really, I think I could probably go back some, some more now um, because it's, you know, it's kind of gotten to where it's like, oh, this is sweet, but it's, it's only a cup. So anyway, that's awesome. And I think that's a great way to, um, you know, 
just little by little, changing things little by little. So the, uh, especially if you're not on this journey by yourself, but you do, you are feeding people in your family and they may not want to go on this journey with you, but we know it's better for them. So um, <laughs> just start doing that. And that, that's another thing too, is, um, you know, when you start making your own bread, uh, you'll find that homemade bread is it's way more delicious, but it does dry out faster and um, it does not last as long because it does it have it doesn't have the preservatives in it that uh, store bought does. So there is a little bit of a growing pain there, too. Uh, number one, because it does taste better when you first pull it out of the oven, you're going to have to make sure that the family doesn't eat the whole loaf. Um, but then like two days later, when they try to make a sandwich with it, it might fall apart. And that that had been our our case um and they're like can you just buy regular bread no you're getting the homemade stuff and you're gonna like it uh, my family has heard me say this many times let me take care of you help me help you <laughs> it's really frustrating but, but i drink yankee tea you drink yankee tea uh, does that mean unsweet i've gotten wow. to where i don't mind yankee tea if you want to call it that i don't mind unsweet Mm -hmm. Um, but I do, I do like sweet tea. I can't drink sweet tea. It has to be completely unsweetened. Really? I maybe will put a lemon in it. Maybe. But I just like plain brewed, strong iced tea. You know how Southerners know they're no longer in the South? <laughs> when, we go, when we go out to eat and we ask for sweet tea and they bring you iced tea and two packs of Splenda. That is isn't. Like what? What is this? That's an abomination. Like that is no. terrible. Yeah, because then you're trying to blend up something into cold tea. It does not work. It does not work. Yeah. I grew up in the Midwest, and this was, of course, back before the days of the internet. You know, in the olden days, and I had never heard of sweet tea. Never heard of it. And my sister-in-law and her friend, we all. The three of us went out to dinner one time, like I was a newlywed and they both ordered sweet tea. And I'm like, what's sweet tea? And they're like, it's tea that's sweet. And I'm like, what? And I, this went back forth for like a minute. And so finally my sister-in-law was like, take a sip. And I sipped her tea and I'm like, oh, it's sweet. Cause I was used to the pouring in the sugar and stirring for an hour and it never dissolving. So I never really drank tea in the in the north never heard of it never heard and then when we moved to alaska one of my, my older son he was like the tea maker of the family and he would he would make it so sweet i i said you could pour it on pancakes um he found out we were moving to the north he goes oh, no more sweet tea <laughs> yeah okay so yeah that's that's pretty funny um, so, all right, well, this, this was a, this was a short chapter. Um, but I, I feel like, uh, even, even short, like you all said, this quiz definitely, um, kind of helped you see where you're at, where there is room for improvement. Um, and this, the, the part where it says move toward your goal with grace is really kind of setting the tone for what we're getting ready to read. Um, starting in chapter four, lots of practical bites. And I just, I love how they have this laid out. I really think this was really well written and really well thought out. So um, for next week's reading, if you guys want to read uh, starting chapter four, Practical Bites one through five, and it's a lot. I think that's about 30, that's 30 something pages. And I say a lot, that's that's a lot for busy, for busy people or maybe people who don't usually read. Um, but I think that that would be a good place for us to pick up next week. Um, so before we go though, um, Miss Constance has started a collaboration this month. The, all four of us ladies are in it. And I wanted, uh, you know, this kind of goes along with beyond labels. So, um, Miss Constance, do you want to tell everybody what, what is going on this month? Uh, sure. So the collaboration is called the March Canning Madness, and it is a canning collaboration, which of course is 
food you're making yourself. You're just making it shelf stable so that you can put it in your pantry. Um, but the premise of it is garden season is getting ready to start. And even though I'm taking the year off of gardening, it is still always spring and summer are still always crazy. And so this was what are the things that you want to can and put up in your pantry, whether it is just something that you want to have available, like sloppy joes or whatever it is that you want quick or what are you needing to make space for or from in your freezer you know you're going to have all the tomatoes coming in you're going to have all this stuff coming in out of the garden and if you need to make space to get ready for that what are you going to get out of your freezer and so it is a monday through friday collaboration all through march uh, there's 13 different channels who are participating including these ladies <laughs> um and so monday through friday all through march there will be one of the channels post posting a video i'm sharing them across my social media every day and that at the end of the month there is a giveaway that is taking place i am giving away a steam canner which a lot of people have never heard of them but they are a lightweight uh, version of a canner kind of looks like a cake pan like a pan with a dome on it um, but it's lightweight and it's good for high acid foods and so I have the canner in my possession sitting right over there and I'm tucking in some extra goodies with it and so anybody who wants to enter all you got to do is watch the videos leave a comment and that comment is an entry and it's much like Lisa over at Sundays does her videos or her giveaways with her collaboration, the Canuary one. Um, every video, leave a comment. Every comment is an entry. And at the end of the month, I'll randomly pick one of the videos and then one of the comments. And that's the winner. Very exciting. I am going to be canning ground beef. And what was the other thing I said I was going to can? I don't remember. I don't either. I have it written down somewhere. <laughs> but uh, ladies, what are y'all? What are y'all canning for the? Um, what? I am doing some caramelized onions, and I'm gonna do some tomatoes that I had in my freezer. I'm gonna be making some tomato sauce with that. Either that, or maybe some chicken. I, I haven't decided on my second one yet. I, I have a few things to can. They, you know, they'll they'll all be up sometime. One of those videos will. But yeah, we'll be doing some tomatoes and some onions. I'm doing corned beef and chicken, like breaking down whole chickens and canning it bone in and um, just like not bone in, bone out, <laughs> whatever you call it. But yeah, chicken and corned beef because it's March. Yep, I will be doing a few different things. Um, I'm planning on having at least one, in, one canning video going up every, le every week. Uh, tomorrow I'm going to be canning potatoes, so that'll be one of my videos. And then I'm also going to do a twist on my sloppy joe recipe, which is a with meat recipe. Um, I'm going to do a taco meat one, and so I have that one planned. It's a good thing I got this thing on mute because I don't know what's happening up there, but it is loud. Um, all right, so um, Monica Sherman said, can someone can pork? Are you are you asking it if it can be done or if someone will do it on the collaboration? I'm getting ready to do pork, but it won't be part of the collaboration, but it will be up sometime this month. Uh, a lady that I went to church with, she canned up a uh, was it pork loin? I think it was pork loin and it was fantastic. I poured it into the pot. She gave me a jar to try. I poured it into the pot and I heated it up. And then I took the meat out and then I added a thickening agent to the broth and made like a gravy and then made some rice to go with it. Oh, it was so good. So it can definitely be done. I don't know if anybody's planning on doing it for the collaboration, but. Um, I know my sister, Hamako uh, Homestead, she just did a barbecued pork video. So that one is live currently. Hamako Homestead, she should be in here. You should just be able to click on her channel and pop over there. Yep. That is absolutely correct. I completely forgot about that. Um, but yeah, and that looks so good. I'm Let's making that one because she did it. I was like, oh, that looks so good. Totally copying it. Y'all um, know we start talking about food. I get really, really excited. <laughs> uh, Karen Olson asked about um, pressure canning versus water bath canning and canning with a glass cooktop. 
I have never had a glass cooktop stove myself. I do know that the weight of some, uh, like the pressure canners or the hot water bath canners can um, be an issue with causing them to crack. Um, that's just what I have heard of happening because they are just so heavy. However, I can say that the steam canner, because there's only about an inch and a half to two inches or so, I mean, it's just this much water and then your jars. So it's really not any heavier than a pot of chili. Um, and so for somebody who is needing to can and, you know, can't use the weight, that might be an option. Um, yeah. So do you guys know anything about canning with glass top stoves or anything like that? Other than what I yes. what I've heard, I'm going to say as a former firefighter paramedic, I have been to fire scenes where a massive pressure canner was used on a glass range cooktop, and it <laughs> it didn't explode. It, that didn't happen, but the entire range basically almost like melted and the whole thing just collapsed. It was a disaster. <laughs> so yes, the weight of the canner will break the top of the, of the cooktop if it's too much. And then that heat, it gets dispersed all the way across that cooktop. It doesn't just stay because the canner is so much bigger. So we really do not want to use those big pressure canners on a glass range cooktop unless it says specifically that you can do it um and that's just coming from someone who has seen it in person not go well <laughs> so um if you are going to do it i think you definitely need to keep it to a small pressure canner that holds no more than seven quarts um but yeah that's definitely something you need to check your manufacturer's instructions on your stove to make yeah. sure that you can use a big pressure canner because that is a serious issue that is that's scary what I to speak to about that yeah I would, usually I, fine but pressure canning so long you want to make sure you have the right equipment for that yeah uh yeah and um parker at grandpa's urban homestead said i do not like canning on a sorry i lost you hang on let me scroll back up here um says that she does not like canning on a glass cock glass cook top but we have a what we have water bath can on it i use a gas stove outside instead buy a camping stove and take it outside um that is a good idea you just want to make sure that um your pressure canner can be cooked on an open flame um that was something that a lot of people said to me when i got one for christmas and i have not checked my manufacturer's instructions yet um but that is something to definitely consider as an alternative um the sheila says they, I have to, okay I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. i was gonna say when they're talking open flame are they talking like a camp stove or are they talking like of camp fire i'm thinking camp fire but i think because i think a camp stove would be fine it'd be the same as a gas stove yeah that's my thought yeah um but yeah so just double check and make sure um, Sheila says, I have a seven quart Presto and I use on a large smooth top burner for 15 years. I've never had an issue. It's a Maytag stove oven. Um, but yeah, so just definitely check the stove and your pressure canner, uh, instructions. And then hopefully, uh, you'll get the answer that you're looking for. All right. Final thoughts. Anyone? before we say adieu until next week. I'm wondering I'm if it could, if maybe it's, if it's an older stove, cause she's been doing it for 15 years. seems like the older stoves are more well-made and I'm speaking from experience because I'm currently having issues with my relatively new stove already. And it's three years old and starting to malfunction on me. I have one last thing to add, and that's just kind of a quote from the book. And it says, we challenge you to do something today, but we also give you the freedom to not do everything today. So that's my final thought. There you go. I like that a lot. Uh, I was just going to say probably kind of along the same lines, just kind of 
do the best that you that you're able to do and and don't um don't beat yourself up if you if you can't do anything <laughs> like just if you if, if all you can do and in, in your life is just get through to the next day then do that and worry about improving yourself tomorrow but do the best you can today i guess Yeah, I like um, at the end, it says, above all else, focus on one bite at a time. With each bite of food, refer back to the roadmap to see if it passes the litmus test. Does it bring me closer to my health goal? Does it give me more freedom? And does it give me more trust in my food supply? So um, those are definitely excellent uh, things to consider if you are getting ready to go um, grocery shopping. And uh, if you're replacing something that you've run out of, if you are going somewhere to eat, just be intentional and uh, be consistent and do what you can. So, all right. So next week, chapter four, practical, practical bites one through five. And um, again, we will get with you guys on um, a time next week. I don't know if it works for everybody for next week yet but we will announce it as soon as uh as soon as we get that nailed down this has been amazing you guys are awesome we learned so much from you all hopefully you all feel the same way and um tim you are too funny um and that's all we've got for you guys today don't forget to check out march canning madness don't forget to subscribe to these ladies if you haven't already Huge thank you to our mods that are here, uh, Tim Beverly, Anna at Fermented Homestead. I saw that Jennifer was here for a second. Um, so, yeah. All right. You all have a fantastic week. And we'll see y'all next time. Until next time, remember to be vigilant, be prayerful, and be prepared. Yeah, be prepared. Oh, also, I made a shirt that says that. Oh, yes. Go check out her shirt. We <laughs> all like ordered blue. Yeah. <laughs> You guys are awesome. All right, ladies. Bye, you all have a great week. See you next time. See you later. Bye, guys.